Welcome along to Film Talk. I'm Richard Edwards and I'm delighted to say we're joined yet again by the wonderful film critic, writer and historian Mark Priest. Mark, welcome back to Film Talk. Hello, Richard. <laughs> Good to see you again. And today it's a subject very close to both of our hearts. We're talking about the films of Sir Roger Moore, in particular the non-Bond films. And we're going to have a look at what we think are some of the best, some of the worst, our favourites, and the big box office drawers and the things that didn't do quite so well. But the non-Bond films of Sir Roger Moore. Now, what would that include? Well, let's have a look at some of the nominations. I love Escape to Athena. I saw it at the cinema. I had the quad poster. But yes. in many ways, it's quite a dreadful film in, in many <laughs> respects. It seems like there's two stories competing with each other all the way through, and it, you, you're a bit confused yeah. about what the hell's going on. And Sir Roger is a Nazi. I'm sure I didn't. <laughs> OK, it must have taken quite a bit to sell him into that role, but there you go. But it's interesting you say that because, like, you know, you've mentioned that to me many, too many times, actually, that you really like that film. Um, and I don't particularly like it, um, but equally, <laughs> well done, equally, I really like Shout at the Devil. And I know mm. you don't have that view. Um, and it, it's peculiar because actually, if I think about it, Shout at the Devil is probably not that much different to Athena in some ways, because there's a lot of gags in there. Well, I, don't, I don't know if they're intentional or not, but mm. <laughs> there's certainly some comical elements to it. There's certainly some odd acting, um, which I know displeases you, particularly with Lee Marvin. Well, <clears throat> no, but let me let me be clear though. I do. I'm not a big fan at Shout of the Devil. Mm. I'm sure I've never met Lee Marvin, and, and I'm sure he's an absolutely lovely guy, and I'm sure he's a very talented mm. actor. But that character that he plays, yes, it's the character Finn. that I don't like is not Lee Marvin. It's the character that he's playing mm. in the film. I didn't warm to or engage with that character at all. I had no sympathy for them whatsoever. I thought Roger's role as the kind of arist buffoon aristocrat, although his arc changes, he becomes a lot more streetwise as the film goes on. Yes. I found that a little incredible to believe mm -hmm. at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And so, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it just, it didn't kind of work for me. Well, yeah, I agree. It's, I can see why you would say that. And um, it works you know, it works both ways. I, I think the film is in is two parts, as we said many times before. It does get into a more serious um, side of things towards the, the end of the film. And actually, I actually felt that Roger's acting was particularly good in it, uh, especially because they lose a, a child, don't they, uh, through the, the Germans that effectively killed the Fleischer, I think his name, killed the baby, um, or they lost the baby because of him. Um, and uh, Roger went out to revenge the death of that child. And I thought some of his acting was some of his best. And indeed, I've read that he valued that film himself mm. as being one of his best performances. And ironically, felt that Lee Marvin helped him give one of his best performances. So, um, yeah, there's lots of rough edges and all the rest of it. But I, I find it quite a good, good fun film with a serious note to it as well. It does show that this is all subjective and opinion, doesn't it? But it, there and there are a couple of versions of you were telling me there mm. are two lengths, isn't it? There's the the full version, then it's like yes. an edited down, must have been yes. edited down for theatrical reasons. So well, it was if the you first... get the longer version, you get more from it, don't you? Yeah, so it's about two and two hours forty minutes, I think, the longer version, and the shorter version is a good forty fifty minutes shorter. And funny enough, it was the first film I ever saw at the cinema that on the poster had abridged version. And I remember, remember thinking, what does that mean? I never realised, really knew what that meant. And of course, it was a shortened version. And it wasn't very good. 
And in those days, if they release a movie and then very often they do a double bill or they release it again a few months later, of which they did, and they released the full version. And I remember going to see that for the second time, the full version, and thought, actually, this is a much better film. And uh, it, it, the bits that you didn't quite understand in the first film sort of came together better. And Peter Hunt, you know, is a great, great director, made some wonderful movies. Of course, Peter Hunt directed Honor Majesty's Secret Service. He has a tremendous mm. Bond heritage. He was the yes. editor for many of the early mm. Sean Connery Absolutely. Bond outings. But so Shout at the Devil was from a book by Wilbur Smith, yes. directed by Peter Hunt. But a favourite we really do agree on mm. is Absolutely. another film directed by Peter Hunt, again set in Africa, again from a book by Wilbur Smith, and that's Gold. And again, starring yes. Roger Moore. From the very first moment, with Elmer Bernstein's music, from that first tinkling as the, the theme music comes up, you know you, you're hooked. Yeah, it, and it certainly did for me. I remember seeing it at the cinema, I think it was about 74, 75. And uh, it was a really exciting movie. Yeah. yeah, yeah, really exciting movie. Great cast. Uh, the gorgeous Susanna York, um, who... You know, I thought she was beautiful and uh, in all of her films. And she was obviously in it and uh, Ray Milland as Ray well. Ray Milland, yeah. It's, it's, a, it's a good, exciting film. It still holds its, its place now, actually. It's well worth watching again because it's, it's, a, it's a good film. It's a good plot. And music, as you said, Elmer Bernstein, you can't beat that really, can you? I'm sure that Roger probably thought it was going to, you know, there was a lot of good critic, critical reviews of uh, Gold when that came out. He plays it well. He plays a tough character. It's a better film from that point of view for Rogers uh, acting than Shout of the Devil, I have to say. Um, and, it, and it's a little bit bond I suppose. But it's still a good plot. It's a good story. We've talked about some of the early 70s with the man who haunted himself. And of course, I like, quite like Cross Plot, which I think was before, that was 69 actually, which was mm -hmm. kind of his moving on from the saint film not a particularly yes, good yes. film in many ways but i find it quite enjoyable but not one mm. of his best no. but um so we kind of covered early mid 70s but later on in the 70s almost getting into 1980 some of roger's films mm. the wild geese a classic in anyone's Absolutely. definition yes you know? and what a cast well and that that's what you know that probably what makes it not just a favorite but a best movie mm. uh, because it's got that cast Wonderful. Um, we've, we've talked about that before. It's a great film. It's one of my top favourite movies. And Roger plays the part really well indeed. Uh, Burton is brilliant. Uh, Harris is fantastic. It's, it's a Stuart Granger. It can go on yes. and on. Good story. And it holds its, you know, you can still watch it now. It still holds up as a movie from the 70s. Uh, that It's brilliant. Really enjoy the Wild Geese. Quite a long film too, and it holds its pace. All mm. the way through, isn't mm. it? But was it two hours, 25, something like that? So, yeah, directed by Andrew McLaglan, I think. Uh, produced by Ewan Lloyd, a great producer. And another mm. favourite of ours is from the same... Do you? It's interesting, there were two from Peter Hunt and now there's two from Andrew and, and Ewan Lloyd. And that's uh, The Sea Wolves. Wild Geese was, what, 78? Sea Wolves was 79, 80. And again, a, an amazing cast of great mm. British character actors plus... Gregory Peck thrown in yes. for good measure. I mean, I think yes. he was in it because um, Roger Moore's, David Evans and Gregory Peck's all had the same agent. And so if you wanted one, <laughs> you had right. to have all three. So that's how they ended up in quite a few films together. <clears throat> there you go. Well, the, yeah, the sea, sea, sea was a good film. Very good. Really enjoyed it at the time. Um, good action. Uh, Roger played Roger Moore. <laughs> As always. Put it. Um, but Gregory Peck, great, great character. You know, he's a great actor as well, wasn't he? And uh, and would hold a film. Uh, I'm not sure it's 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 kept. It's a bit dated now. I feel. Yeah, I feel that too. It's mm -hmm. lost some of its shine. Whereas the Wild Geese is just it doesn't seem to date. It's amazing. No, no, it's uh, it's a very hard one to sort of quantify. But uh, yeah. It's got, it comes down to plot and story very often, doesn't it? Mm. If you've got a good plot and story, as we said, it keeps the momentum. If we were going to pick a, a favourites list, I, I would probably still include the Sea Wolves 
on mm. there. Although I'd like to put Escape to Athena in the top list, I suspect Seawolves is a, still a better film than Escape to Athena. Mm. Getting into the 80s, some of the 80s, some of his other non-Bond films were starting to... I think he was doing them just... Spice World? I mean, come on. I know, um, I know. Bullseye with uh, Michael Caine, uh, Michael Winner directed yes. with Michael yes. Caine. You would think it had the ingredients, mm. but it was just awful, wasn't it? Sherlock Holmes in New York, is it worth... I mean, it's a, well, kind of a TV I, movie, though, isn't it, really? For me, personally, just, it's wrong on so many different levels. Um, <laughs> I think Roger was just miscast in that, really. Uh, and actually, as both of us love Sherlock Holmes so much, um, he plays it, you know, he plays it like Roger Moore. Uh, it shouldn't have happened. <laughs> it's, it's, they, they shouldn't have done it. <laughs> All right, well, let's just try another one then, see if we can get another nomination for the top list. <clears throat> North Sea Hijack, known as Fuchs in the US, I thought. But yeah, North Sea yeah. Hijack. Mm -hmm. I, I really enjoyed it. Anthony Perkins. James Mason. I remember seeing it at the cinema at the time when it came out, and I remember thinking that was a good action movie, actually. Anthony Perkins, as you say, the baddie. James Mason in there as well. Um, I mean, Roger Moore, you know, it's a strange, strange way. He loved these cats, didn't he? And uh, you know, if, if people don't love cats, he doesn't love them, which is well, the yeah. motto of the movie. Uh, but, it, yeah, I remember at the time, it's, uh, you know, I, I probably wouldn't rush to watch that again at the moment but it's you know still okay okay so we've talked about some of our favorites some of our okay films and some of those that my god we should never mention ever again like the curse of the pink panther but if we were going to pick our top five favorite roger moore non-bond films well let's pick five and then out of that we'll try and select one that's the standout mm. in our opinion but mm -hmm. so in the top five, I think we said there would be Gold, yeah, yep. directed by Peter Hunt. Great film, 1974. Yep. Then another one, what do you think? Which one would you put in there? Have to put in Wild Geese, for sure. 78, yeah. Produced by Ewan Lloyd, great film. Yes, yeah. And I think The Man Who Haunted Himself from 1970, Basil Dearden. We said, mm -hmm. we've talked about on a previous film talk, wonderful, wonderful yes. film. Yeah. A fourth one, you want to suggest a fourth? I think we did say sea walls would probably be up there, didn't we? Just scraping on, in. Yeah, on the grounds that North Sea Hijack or Escape to Athena weren't quite as favourite. But yes, Sea Walls, yes, I, I think, think, still holds up as a as a film. Yes. Out of those out of the three, I think you you would have to give it the, the nod. And a fifth one, are we gonna go cross plot or are we gonna go shout at the devil to be in our number five? I think you want to go shout at the devil, don't you? And I think we should, really. I, I, I think we should because Rogers has said he felt it was his best his film favorite. from acting point of view. Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay, so we've got Wild Geese, Gold, Sea Wolves, Man Who Haunted Himself, Shout at the Devil. Is there one we would pull out and say, if you could only take one to your desert island, which would it mm. be? Mm. Well, I think it's an, easy, it's an easy choice for me, Richard, I have to say. Are you going to say Wild Geese? I am. <laughs> I think I'm going to say Wild Geese as well as my all-time favourite non-Bond film. It's, 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 wor it's a worthy top-of-the-list film. A good actor didn't often get the roles that he could have done or should mm. have done to, to show his yes. true talent, but a capable yes. director too um, mm. and a, a really lovely, lovely guy. I mean, what more can you say? Yeah, there? and a very generous man, actually. Um, a very generous man, and of course, all his charitable work. Um, mm. Yeah, it's great credit to him, actually. Very, very good. Very decent man. Mark, thank you very much. It's been great sharing our favourite Roger Moore moments with you. Great fun. Thanks, Richard. It'd be great to know what you think, so do leave some comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to hit that little bell icon to get a notification every time we release a new video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.